Well, hi everyone, I'm Lance Olson, and I'd like to help you through at least uh, four minutes and 50 seconds of the plague months by reading just a little excerpt from my novel, My Red Heaven, which is set in 1927 Berlin. And this is uh, a snippet from a chapter called White Silence, Frozen Music that focuses on Werner Heisenberg. Piloting through Alexanderplatz, Werner Heisenberg contemplates bird nests. Heedless of the tiny silver star descending above him, of the horns, motors, carriage wheels, creaking vegetable carts, the square's warfare of noises, he moves in a spotless white silence on his way to catch the 930 to Leipzig. This evening he will deliver a lecture at the university that will summarize his findings. Afterward, he will dine with several senior faculty members to finalize his new post as department head and professor of theoretical physics. He is acutely indifferent. Or no, that's not quite right. He cares very much, just not about the new post. He cares about how his new post translates into leaving behind his mentor, Niels Bohr, at the University of Copenhagen, into returning to Germany's viscera and a sweep of unexpectedness. Werner knows Werner thrives in such shaky, adrenalized spaces. Werner moves in a spotless white silence, contemplating bird nests while composing his lecture. He had planned to put the thing together on the overnight train. Instead, he found himself tangled in a Berliner Tageblatt article. Amid recent restoration of the capital's cathedral, workers exposed a palimpsest of bird nests aggregated beneath the decayed roof. They had been built over several centuries. Time itself had become a solid residue. Years had turned into an avian archaeology you could touch, cup in the palm of your wonder. Generations of jackdaws and swifts had constructed comfort by pilfering people's hair strands, yarn snags, yard trash, candy wrappers, broom bristles, wedding rings, sock scraps, fish ribs, leather gloves, peppermint gum, promissory notes, bills of sale, even tiny bits of banknotes for a thousand Russian rubles, fortunes from 3,000 kilometers away. There were snippets of orchestral compositions, what might have been bits of diaries or encyclopedias or medical textbooks, an architecture of frozen music. Because the recipes, the concert tickets, the packaging, it is as if all Berlin were in those nests, its socio-historical substructures, overlays, overlaps, its pastness, a splendid geological formation. Swimming deeper and deeper into the conversation with himself, he somehow fails to notice someone, perhaps that attractive young woman to his left, one of the boys dodging, ducking, laughing to his right, bump into him, beg his pardon, and vanish back into the fleshy commotion. Late to his own accident, Werner reflects rather on how the rest of Europe can cackle all at once about Germany's buckling in the war. The truth remains, its science is second to none. He cuts right through the colossal domed railway station's main doors, and only now, only as he steps into the vast echo and thrum of the huge half-cylinder, commences mounting the steps toward his platform, does he startle and stop. His back pocket, he realizes, has become infinitesimally lighter than it was three minutes ago. Werner, a good-looking man in a shabby olive tweed jacket, pauses on the stairs leading up to the platform from which his uh, train will depart. As if working through a perplexing equation, he carefully pats himself down, first his trousers, then his jacket, next his various pockets, some real, some fancy. Pedestrians spill around him. A black shadow scrambles across his feet 
and flickers out, Werner thinks, cloud. He reflexively raises his head to spot a large bird rising into the building's steel framework. A warbler, perhaps. Perhaps, he speculates, a pigeon. <laughs>